Hi everyone, good afternoon from Italy, from Avellino, from the Malzoni Center. It's uh, a great uh, pleasure for all of us to introduce this new appointment of uh, uh, Malzoni TV. And today we have uh, a case of uh, deep endometriosis with infiltration and involvement of the bowel. And it's a very great pleasure for me to start with a 20 minutes lecture about the innovation in the use of the stapler technology for the treatment of bowel surgery, in particular for bowel endometriosis. And so it's a great pleasure for me to introduce the product manager of uh, Johnson & Johnson uh, company, uh, Jada Laga. And uh, I think she's ready to start with the 20 minutes uh, lecture. Good evening. Yes, I'm going I to share my screen. Perfect. Hi, Jada. The floor is yours and uh, you. see you in 20 minutes to start with the live surgery. Thank you again. Okay, just please, if you can enable uh, my screen sharing because it's been enabled. It's been disabled, sorry. Okay. Okay, here we are. Uh, I think you can hear me and now you can see my screen. Uh, I'll reintroduce myself. My name is Jada Ilaga. I'm the product manager at national level for J&J &J for all the stapling systems and for the um, products uh, used in generally in uh, laparoscopy. I'll give you a brief introduction to what the science of tissue management is for us and what it means to us in terms of innovation in surgery with the power staplers in particular. Sorry, but... Okay. So our common goal as us as a company and you as surgeons is to reach optimal re patient outcomes that you know is affected by uh, many factors. Uh, patient factors, surgeons factors related to your training experience and your ability with the new techniques, then human factors and us as a company in the uh, challenging uh, position of uh, launching on the in the market newer technology that's um, with a goal of uh, having the interaction in between you through the device and the living tissue easier and easier from launch to launch. So let's uh, briefly take a look at the tissue dynamics. As you know, uh, it's fundamental while manipulating tissues manually or more specifically through um, uh, staplers to do and to uh, go through a gentle handling, uh, achieve a careful hemostasis to preserve the blood supply while um, applying staples and to adopt a strict aseptic technique as to avoid the detention of the tissue while working on it, to have a sharp or a sure a sharp anastomotic dissection to be accurate while appositioning the, um, the various tissue layers and then obliterating all the dead spaces while uh, mechanically stapling the tissue. 
So uh, when we use a stapler, we know that there are uh, different elements that do affect the uh, action that we are performing. And mainly uh, they are the thickness of the tissue that we're treating, its capability and possibility to be compressed. So it's compressibility. And then the ability to stretch, to shape and to regain its uh, uh, initial uh, texture uh, after having been uh, stapled. As you know, Elarini, Dr. Elarini is the first, first one who um, clinically uh, collected data to demonstrate something that uh, you experience every day in your surgery rooms. So uh, concentrating and focusing on stomach uh, tissues, he demonstrated that the stomach thickness is uh, by rice from thinnest to uh, thickest, depending on uh, where you are uh, stapling or, or working within the organ. So that the thickness varies not only from organ to organ, but within the same organ. And additionally, and more important for us, as producer of new devices and new uh, staplers is the fact that the, the tissue thickness varies significantly enough that selecting different reloads is also uh, recommended. So uh, on uh, treated tissues, as you obviously know, so uh, radiated tissues as infected or inflamed tissues or reoperative surgery, what we know for sure is that the challenges that you do encounter in uh, treating them is even, is even higher. So going from the tissue to uh, the surgical device, here you have um, uh, a close shot of the anatomy of a stapler. Uh, the appropriate staple formation is a combination of the instruments. So you here uh, have uh, a close shot of the, of the jaws of the instrument and then uh, of the staple. And here you have the anatomy of how um, a cartridge, a JJ cartridge is uh, um, uh, developed and is um, uh, produced. Um, as you probably know or have experienced, if you are JJ users, um, we are transitioning or we've been transitioning, especially in the power platform for from a closed B-shaped staple to a 3D staple and still working on two and not three uh, staggered staple lines, what we've been achieving, and you, you can notice it or it's noticeable on, especially in, uh, um, well, uh, working uh, with uh, an echelon circular power stapler that uh, you can embrace and you can assure uh, a wider hemostasis working with this type of uh, closed staple, so a 3D shaped staple, uh, still staying on a uh, two staggered staple line instead of, uh, of three. This is a brief overview, but very technical uh, overview of the staple formation process. You know that uh, in order to uh, close or to achieve its final shape, so B shape or 3D shape, uh, there is a sled that uh, pulls up the drivers and that uh, allows the, the legs to meet the uh, upper uh, anvil pocket and to, uh, to eventually assume this B-shaped or 3D shape. In order to achieve or to have this uh, sort of achievement, I'll show you briefly how um, our newer technologies work. Uh, so we've seen that uh, in order to uh, 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 obtain uh, a consistent staple line made of uh, well and performantly closed B-shaped or 3D-shaped staples, we need to apply an, on the tissue an optimal compression. So if there is insufficient compression, we may uh, experience leaks on the tissue. And the, if there is over compression, we may damage the tissue. So we need to understand how through the technology, 
we can balance and reach um, uh, a fair balancement in between the two situations. Uh, we uh, have always been working and we still work both on echelon power stapler and on uh, our newer endocutter uh, in, through, in two phases compression. There is a pre-compression and then a focal compression. So we uh, highly recommend through our uh, IFU to all the surgeons to close the tissue within the jaws, wait for 15 seconds to let all the liquids or the main liquids evacuate from it and to prepare it, uh, um, uh, diminishing its, uh, the, the, uh, the thickness of the tissue of uh, 0.5 millimeters, and then firing the instrument to apply a further compression to it, a focal, so stronger compression, but that in this case, um, uh, less uh, traumatic for the tissue as it has been prepar uh, prepared in advance for at least these 15 seconds. So uh, what uh, we claim is that there is a minimum threshold of compression that has to be achieved on a tissue to obtain successful anastomosis and to better control all the, the possible uh, leakage or uh, risks of complication that may uh, occur on the tissue. Uh, I would like to give you these highlights of uh, how to select among uh, our uh, reloads. Here we are concentrating on our endocutters and uh, at the moment, uh, our sales force, so our uh, commercial partners are uh, highlighting um, how it's important to change uh, our user's mindset when choosing among our um, uh, cartridges to uh, staple the tissue. Until a very recent time, uh, you've been selecting and we've been suggesting different effects that can be achieved on, on tissue, choosing among the different reloads, basing the, the choice on the reload color. Today, we are confident through the newer uh, clinical evidences that we are spreading around and that uh, we'll, uh, we are uh, sharing with you too, that uh, you might and you have to choose in between the different cartridges, uh, basing your choice on the type of hemostatic effects that you do want to achieve on the tissue. As we do cover a very high or higher range of tissue thicknesses through this newer technology. So the GSD reloads in combination with Power Gun Plus. So that today we are confident enough to say that uh, a white reload, for instance, is not meant to be used just on vascular tissues, but on those tissues that can be um, compressed and whose thickness uh, goes from one to two millimeters. So just to give you a further an example, if the tissue that you are treating, uh, its thickness is around 2.2, you would choose among a blue or um, gold reload, depending on the hemostatic result that you want to achieve. So choosing a blue obviously would give you um, a more hemostatic effect on the tissue. Which one? do work and which one doesn't work. Both of them do work and do have uh, a performant result in, term, in terms of good staple formation. But in one case, you would have a more hemostatic staple line in the other, uh, a less hemostatic and more perfused one. So I would skip this slide that goes straight to the, or remarks the same elements and I would go on what on another element that there, that is uh, has been strengthened once more on the newer technology that is the tissue control because as you know when you use an endo cutter you could uh, experience um, a tissue flow uh, longitudinally or laterally 
So uh, we've been working in order to uh, limit or to maximize the uh, tissue control when firing the instrument, because as you know, when we fire an endocutter, any endocutter, the tissue would flow longitudinally. And in terms of good or bad staple formation, this means that if the tissue flows, the staple would uh, have a higher chance not to make the anvil pocket proper, uh, properly uh, when it closes and when we are firing, uh, having a higher risk to have uh, a staple uh, or a staple line with staples who do not uh, uh, form properly. And this is due uh, also to possible anvil deflection that occurs while firing the instrument. So this is why we work uh, from one technology to the other at strengthening uh, more and more the anvil uh, jaws uh, to make it and to build it with stronger materials to avoid this deflection at the distal part. Uh, the deflection may occur also laterally because the thicker the tissue you treat, the more the lower jaw can experience um, a deflection. And this, as you can see from uh, this picture, may affect once again the possibility that the staples can form properly. So just very few other considerations uh, related to the, the, the good balance in terms of hemostasis that uh, you need or want to achieve on the tissue is that uh, in order to work in a proper way, um, the tearing of tissue and the, the, the slower healing or the, the bad um, impact that you can have on the tissue are highly uh, controlled with a, um, a technology that works at uh, minimizing the, um, the tissue flow. I will go straight here just to show you that in very uh, or in thicker tissue, the initial pre-compression helps preparing the tissue in, prepares to obtain this uh, final effect here. So a, a proper form staple line instead of uh, not aligned or even worse, not uh, properly uh, formed staples. So this is uh, once again, what you can experience if you, uh, if the tissue control or the tissue movement control lacks once uh, when the, um, you fire the instrument. So uh, we, we want once again to remark that a critical success factor in creating the optimal staple line um, is based or relies on the, 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 the control of the movement on one hand and the capability or ability of uh, the jaws instrument to apply a proper uh, compression on it. And I would close with these highlights on the uh, new, we've been launching this instrument now, it's been a couple of years and we've had a very high success in terms of um, uh, good hemostasis and good balancement in between uh, hemostasis and good perfusion with the echelon uh, circular power stapler. Uh, that uh, incorporates uh, many of the uh, uh, technological um, uh, innovations that we've been seeing on the previous slides. Because as you see, there is uh, we've been incorporating here the gripping surface, who's um, the, 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 that gives in this case the possibility to apply compression just where is mostly needed. So where the staple will form. So it's uh, more gentle, it, it treats more gently the tissues uh, that is around or, or within the jaws, but applies a stronger compression in any case, 
just and where the staple would come out and form uh, down, but with the 3D um, form or shape. And as I was been mentioning before, because in this case, we've been able to assure a higher area of compression and hemostasis, as well as uh, guaranteeing uh, the perfusion of two staple lines, but the uh, capability to uh, reach or to um, uh, deliver the hemostasis of three staple lines, given by this uh, particular shape that this uh, type of a staple uh, delivers. What is more important for us is that through um, a full, uh, partially, not fully, um, uh, uh, powered activated instrument in this case, uh, we've been able to demonstrate through clinical evidences that in those um, uh, districts where the um, uh, uh, leak rate is uh, uh, internationally uh, recognized as being uh, around 10, 20%. So I'm focusing here specifically on the lower anterior resection. We have at the moment one national and one uh, multinational uh, study that uh, I would uh, ask you to, 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 to have your local commercial partner share, share with you and discuss with you if you haven't had the chance to go through them yet, that uh, clearly demonstrates that uh, the leak rates that uh, it, mm, you uh, would encounter while using this device drops down uh, to um, less than 2%. So, I would uh, at this point, uh, yes, um, stop sharing my presentation. I don't know if there are questions. I don't see any at the moment. So, um, Claudio. here we are. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, wonderful presentation. And for the moment, uh, there are, uh, I go to check to the, to the chat. Okay, I don't uh, see any no, question at no, the moment. No question at the moment. So Perfect. everything is so. clear for the people. Thanks for sharing uh, your experience on the innovation in the new supper technology from j and and so, uh, if okay for you, we are absolutely ready to start with the presentation of our clinical case and uh, starting for live surgery. Okay, thank you and enjoy the Th clinical case. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Jada. Bye -bye. Thanks again. Congratulations. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, we start uh, ready. We are ready to start uh, with... Uh, presentation of the case, uh, the age of the patient is 43, 26 is the BMI. She had a previous uh, laparoscopic surgery for enucleation of uh, left endometrioma in 2018, and uh, the symptoms are related to dysmenorrhea, dyskepsia, dyspareunia, and chronic pelvic pain. No medical therapy, only a few months, two months of Dynagest medical treatment uh, uh, suspended for a side effect, uh, very heavy of the patients. And so now she uh, has no, uh, no under medical treatment. And the second slide. Okay, this is the preoperative ultrasound evaluation that we did with Dr. Alessandra Di Giovanni, and so uh, she has uh, adenomyosis uh, uh, estimated uh, with a, a small uh, septum or the level of the uterus. Uh, this is the classification of Escher-SJ uh, 2013, and uh, additions between uh, uh, left and uh, right ovary. 
uh, with the typical small endometrioma, uh, two small endometrioma, 17 millimeter and 8 millimeter on the right ovary, with a good follicular reserve. Uh, the anti-mulleran hormone is uh, good for the age, is 1.6, and the left ovary has an uh, additions with the uterus and sigma and the pelvis, uh, and a poor follicular reserve for the previous uh, 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 surgery. On the posterior compartment, there is a, a complete obliteration of the patch of the Douglas uh, with strong additions between the, the retrocervical and area and the rectal anterior wall, with the retrocervical uh, deep infiltrating nodule of uh, three centimeters, uh, with a component infiltration infiltrated the uterosacral ligaments. Uh, on both sides, uh, 18 millimeter is the maximum infiltration on the right uterosacral ligament, and 14 millimeter is the maximum of infiltration on the left uterosacral ligament, uh, with uh, minimal extension uh, inside the parametrium, bilaterally, with a distance from the right ureter and the left uh, uh, estimated uh, n uh, at no more than one centimeter. So the infiltration in the the infiltration in the uh, bowel wall, the rectal wall, uh, is at seven centimeters from the anal verge, and the size of the nodule is uh, so big because it's uh, five centimeters in the craniocaudal sites, thirteen millimeters is the infiltration in the muscularis, uh, and the transversal sites is twenty millimeter with a good, uh, strong stenosis, more than uh, at least 50%. Vai avanti con la site. This is the new ential score uh, classification with ultrasound. So at the level of the ovary, we have on the right uh, uh, small endometrioma and no, nothing on the left. So it's zero and two. T are the additions at the level of the tubes uh, uh, with uh, uh, peritoneum, with the pelvic side wall, and uh, with the part of the bowel, and is uh, classified T2 and, and 2, right, left and right. A is 2 because th there is a, a little bit less than 3 centimeters uh, retrocervical nodule, and B is the infiltration in the parametrial area 2 and 2 on the right and on the left. C3, because there is an infiltration of the nodule uh, more than 3 centimeters uh, in the rectum area, and FA, because there is uh, an adenomyotic uh, uh, evidence of adenomyosis, uh, diffuse adenomyosis uh, in the uterus. So, the scheduled surgical procedure is a radical excision of endometriosis. We have to do, of course, a segment of our section. We try to do our new technique of nose technique with the mono or bilateral salpingectomy if needed, and use of diode laser for the treatment of the small left side, uh, right side, sorry, endometrioma. And we are ready. Dr. Lucia Casarella, she's helping me on the right side. And Dr. Martin Vetrella with manipulator. We have the, this manipulator, the Valchev, very simple manipulator, very cheap, but very useful because he, it has a very good exposition of uh, the retrocervical area and the retrovaginal area. So we put the three five millimeter port and uh, we try to to mobilize the, the uterus is very difficult for the presence of this nodule in the posterior area that we know from the preoperative ultrasound evaluation. So I try to explain you the situation these are the additions on the left and the situation on the right. So you see that we have confirmation of the additions between the ovary tubes and the bowel and the pelvic side wall and the uterus. So T is 2-2 on both sides, confirmed. 
and obliteration of the patch of the Douglas is confirmed and here we have the big nodule starting from the retrocervical area infiltrating in the parametria and then the anterior wall of the rectum and uh, confirmation about uh, the area of the adenomyosis in uh, this part of the uterus and so we can start uh, the anatomy is very good and uh, so I think that we can explain very well the, the technique, the preparation of, of the bowel endometriotic treatment. So, starting from the left side here, we see very well the ureter. Okay, and we are ready to to start in this area here. We stay, in any case, medially to this area, medially to the ureter. and try to open the right space starting from the left. Then we want to, to free the ovary and fix, if possible, the ovary laterally in order to have more space here. So we try to do it now. We need a small, more movement on the, on the uterus. So I start to free a little bit here this area of the uterus, so Martin can push up the uterus and we can increase the, the movement and the antiversion of the uterus. Okay. Check the bleeding here. Okay, and now we have more movement of the uterus. And here we can free the ovary and use the first T lift on the left to put the ovary laterally and uh, have a good vision of this part of the peritoneum uh, and the entry in the, in the parameter area. T-lift. Okay, so we put now the T-lift here. We say low in this part and we pay attention to the small vessel of the abdominal wall and then we go with the needle inside the ovary then outside with T-lift system and then we can fix the ovary and with the tube like this and this is the system to suspend the ovary laterally okay then we come back here we free a little bit laterally and then we can start to use the ultrasound system of harmonic to prepare here and to go down in the preparation of the of the space so with the harmonic we go very fast laterally and we prepare the descendant colon and mobilization of the descendant colon here
and here. Okay, now we can start to do the preparation here. So you see that perfect. Lucia push here on the bubble. And we go in this direction. You see, this is the entry in the cryer part of the medial parietal space. Uh, this is the entry in the retrorectal area. So going in this direction, I start to prepare starting from the cranial part with no infiltration of the disease. I go in the direction of the disease. Centrico dentro, apri, perfetto. You see how fast is the harmonic system? In this kind of job. And I'm arriving at the level of the hypogastric nerves on the left. So here you have the hypogastric nerves. You see this one well, with all the small branches of the nerve. The vision is very clear. And if I work with the aspiration and the coagulation with the, the other button here, I do this kind of coagulation of the tissue and arrive better to identify the small neural part, the branch of the presacar fascia here. This is the presacar fascia with hypogastric nerves. So I push the nerve laterally and so I start the nerve sparing preparation going immediately and preparing the posterior space here the retrorectal space the avascular space pushing up the rectum So I want to clean a little bit the scope. And we can restart, I think, yes, with a very good vision. And so this is the direction of the ureter here. You see, so I can start if I want to remove the part of this peritoneum that is infiltrated around the ureter I have to prepare laterally the tissue in order to remove all this tissue around the ureter so this is the so-called ureterolysis that we can we, we need to start from the cranial part going down and down okay So perfect, the preparation on the left I think is very good for the moment and I'm arriving uh, at the here.
where the the ureter go across the uterine artery. Here we have the uterine artery at the origin in this area. Perfect. Okay. So, starting to remove this part, we can remove and complete all the ureterolysis. Under vision, there is the ureter. Uh, we can remove all the fibrotic endometriotic tissue around the ureter. There is no stenosis of the ureter, but it's important to completely remove this part. So I push laterally the ureter. I pull laterally the ureter and the tissue around the ureter and I stay close to the adventitia and work with the harmonic like this And then I cut here. The anatomy is very clear now. Soft tissue, no infiltration in the this more lateral part. The nerve is down, and we can start to remove this first part of the nodule with the lateral infiltration. And this is the, the left periureteral nodule. And so, on the left, very good vision of the all the neural part. You see from here the hypogastric nerves, the branch, if I stay there, you see the direction of the nerves go here, and this is the direction. So if I stay medially, I stay in a good plane, and I push laterally all the nerves and the small branches here. So this is the, the preparation for nerve sparing, preparation of the dorsal parameter. You see the nerves here, So this preparation, in this case, is very educational, very good for anatomy. Uh, the first question is about the use of bipolar. I was using before the bi-clamp. Now we are using uh, the harmonic instruments, ultrasound instruments. But the bipolar, by clamp, bipolar setting is no more than 20. And the characteristics of the by clamp from Herbe is that the by clamp rate, the impedance of the tissue and the works very low. And it's the new generation of, uh, of bipolar system. Okay. So you see that on the left side we did, I think, a very good job and so it's all prepared on the left. The ureter is under vision. Probably we can uh, a little bit free here. So the ureter go laterally, more, more laterally. And we are more safe in the preparation of the retrocervical nodule. So very good. Okay. Now we go on the right side. You see that we can uh, do the aspiration of the fluid. And another question from uh, Dr. Caban Alfaslan. 
uh, it's uh, about the position of the port entrance of the trocar if we change the position uh, regarding the sites uh, the weight of the patients uh, uh, usually we try to use uh, uh, not so low entry so our this is the typical position with the 11 millimeter trocar in the umbilical port uh, area inside the umbilicus and down we are three or four finger in the same line a three five millimeter port and usually we can do any kind of uh, surgeries with uh, this position of the trocar and now on the right side you see first of all it's better to free here the tube and the ovary from the this part of the bubble and then push laterally the the bubble uh, sorry the the ovary with the t-lift okay here probably it's better to work with the bike lamp and the scissor because this is a part of the nodule attached to the tube starting from the posterior adenomyotic area in the uh, retro uterine and retro cervical area and uh, this is the insertion of the tube and the uterus is totally fixed posteriorly with very pure mo movement with uh, the manipulator and we are arriving in that normal okay so this is the direction of the tube uh, it's uh, probably we have to remove the tube uh, probably the the right one but we will check the tube later and then we decide if to remove or not okay so okay for the moment is uh, uh, is better to try to free the part of the over here probably is not possible for the moment to put the right T lift we can do it after uh, Uh, for the moment it's better to start to free the bubble nodule here in the middle from the posterior wall of the here adenomyotic nodule here okay and here we start to arrive sometimes the use of uh, precise monopolar current connected to the scissor on the left hands can help us to work like this and to open this area okay again that we go inside the nodule remember that the, this nodule is very big it was estimated at five centimeters craniocardial color size so we consider big nodule in the bowel with the deep infiltration of uh, 12 millimeter and so it means that we have no chance we have no possibility to do a conservative treatment it's impossible to do a shaving 
and we have to do, of course, a bowel resection. The problem is that we are very low because the nodule was estimated at seven centimeters from the anal verge. So low resection, but you see that this is a very good plate and we removed this part and we are entry in the correct plane. Very nice. And we increase now the movement of the bowel, of course, but we increase the movement of the uterus. You see how it's different now. And now we is totally different because we can push up the uterus like this. We can clean here in order to understand better the nodule. I can feel the nodule. I, it's very clear for me because from here to down here there is the big nodule with infiltration. And so this is the entry in the middle parietal space. Here you see good tissue, fat tissue, no disease but the entry in the direction here from the lateral side to the medial side of the rectovaginal septum. This is the entry direction here. So this is the vagina attached posteriorly to the bowel. So the movement from uh, Martin is important with the manipulator. Uh, we are going from the lateral part to middle and we are inside the rectovaginal septum now. I can work now with monopolar two, pushing the rectum down and going under vision in the very good right plane here. Then you see the movement from Lucia that push back the uterus and I'm ready to work here at the level of the insertion of the right uterosacral ligament. And here. Spara un po'. Andiamo a vedere il manuale. Ah, no, perfetto. Dimmi tutto. Per niente. Ok, I want to show you a little bit better because we need to clean more. Because for me, it starts to be very clear. And it's absolutely confirmed the preoperative evaluation. You see, this is the right plane. We are at the level of the elevatory animuscle over there, laterally to the rectum. Very, very good. I can go a little bit down. And here now. Okay, again here. Now probably, yes, now we can fix the right ovary too. tubo va bene
Okay, so you see that Dr. Lucia Casarella pushed the ovary laterally. This is the small uh, confirmed uh, uh, endometrioma of the right side. Going here, we increase the movement of the uterus. We arrive at the level of this plaque here. And uh, we can put probably another yes, yeah, tea lift on the right ovary. Now the right ovary is outside. Okay, I try to put the here in the normal tissue, and then we open the small endometrioma and we treat with the laser. And here. Down. And here. Okay. Strong tissue. Probably it's enough. Uh-huh. We try to try to fix like this. Okay. So now Thank you also to Roberto Contino, the nurse in uh, the operative room. To Gaetano Bianco, the other nurse. To Dr. Lazzarini, the anesthesiologist. The technomedic with Enzo for the technicians group. And Mimo, the other technicians. Now. Mariana Rasile, she's helping me now on the right side. And we are going up here, preparing the right middle parietal space. And with this preparation, I go to free this part of the bowel, increase the movement, and check exactly the area of uh, our resection. This is the big nodule starting from here, arriving here. So, we can. Uh, you see that the right ureter is over there. This is the direction. And uh, I think that we have to do the same job on the right ureter, so we can remove the part of the here of the peritoneum, and then we can prepare the right hypogastric nerves and finish the preparation for the bowel section. So probably starting from the IP ligament up here, yes, or yes, probably over there, here. There is the the entry here, yes. Okay. And then we can go down. Very good. And again here. Prepare a little tool transition.
We can work with Ultra transition now, with harmonic. I have under vision the, the ureter and I stay immediately pushing. You see that Mariana push the, the ureter a little bit laterally and we go in this plane. So we can remove all the peritoneum with infiltration. Okay, here it's Okay, now the ureter go laterally. And this is the uh, infiltration here of the disease. Okay, now. I say superficial here. We start to remove this part, and then we can uh, be more precise to to remove all the small part of infiltration in this area of the peritoneum at the end. For the moment, this is important to check the nerves that arrives here and to stay here for the preparation. The preparation starts from the promontorium. This is the promontorium here, the right. Common iliac artery here, we open the gray line here with harmonic, we go very fast and go to open the right parietal space, middle parietal space. This is the connection with the previous preparation. So if I go down, I can see the left hypogastric nerves from the right opening of the peritoneum and then we go down this is the direction of the nerve. I stay close to the rectum, pushing up the rectum and down the peritoneum. So Mariana pull up the rectum. I stay close to the rectum. This is important because I have to increase the distance and the mobility of the rectum because we have a very low nodule, uh, seven centimeters from the anal verge. So it's important to to free the rectum laterally from here and we go up with the rectum increasing the distance from the anal verge uh, a question from Dr. Cohen uh, that asked me uh, if uh, uh, we try to perform, uh, uh, he say extraction, I don't know what means extraction of adenomyo adenomyosis. In this case, it's not an adenomyoma. In case of adenomyoma, uh, focus uh, adenomyosis, we try to do the 
uh, excision of adenomyotic nodule. In this case, it's a diffuse uh, adenomyot adenomyosis, so there is no possibility to do surgery. You can only remove the uterus, but in this case, the patients want to preserve the uterus, so no possibility to treat this adenomyosis. Uh, we can treat, of course, the adenomyotic nodule of the retrocervical area that we go to remove at the end. And you see how pushing up the rectum, I increase the mobility. I free here. And uh, now, this is important to understand. Uh, you see that this is the, uh, all the fibrotic tissue around uh, the rectum that uh, we can remove because this is superficial disease on the cirrhosis of the rectum. We have to remove with the shaving technique and then we can resect the rectum more cranially and we reduce the risk of uh, complications. You know that the most important complication is related to the descents of the anastomosis and the risk of the complication increase uh, in the lower bowel section. So, okay. So we are removing this part of fibrotic tissue here. And so with this shaving, we can resect the rectum more cranially. Because here there is no deep infiltration. It's only infiltration of the fat tissue. Okay, so removing this superficial part, now we can really go to prepare the area of resection. So uh, I can feel the nodule, big, very big. You know, it's very important the preoperative ultrasound evaluation because sometimes it's impossible during the surgery to understand how big and how deep is the nodule. So. Uh, it's mandatory to do a good preoperative skilled evaluation and uh, I feel the nodule here and stop here. So I have to cut over there and to cut there the rectum I start the preparation laterally here. You see how important is the very important the use of ultrasound instruments on the fat tissue. Here there is a small vessel and I go with the coagulation first and then I cut. Okay. Okay, we are at the level of the cirrhosa. Here, here the preparation uh, is good. I go on the left, anterior left area. Here. And very gently we go to prepare over there at the same level on the left. 
uh, in case of vessel I do coagulation first and then I cut Again, here, a little bit posteriorly on the left. I have to remove this part of tissue and fat tissue here. Okay. And then here down. Okay, we are ready on the left. Remain only this small bridge of tissue here, and then we are ready to to cut and to resect. Okay, so I have to Okay, very good movement posteriorly here. Okay, good preparation here. I can finish and we are ready to resect. So, what do we do now? Uh, here probably we need a little bit more preparation. And now we are ready to resect this part of the rectum. You know that uh, we changed our technique of segment of our section moving from the traditional technique of uh, a small subapubic mini laparotomy and we move it to a technique of a total laparoscopic uh, resection with the nose technique using uh, the rectum to remove the resected part of the rectum and to introduce the anvil of the circular separator. So the so-called nose that we modified two years ago and we published uh, our technique one and a half year ago. Ready. So at, the, at this level, we are ready for resection here. And so we have only to cut the rectum directly like this. We go inside the rectum. Of course, we need a very good preparation of the rectum. Uh, mechanical preparation starting the day before. And antibiotics uh, uh, post-operative support
ok. And here we are inside the rectum. And we are in. Okay, now we are inside the rectum. We complete the, this kind of resection. Aspirator. Cambio un attimo se poi la, la cannula, se riesce a cambiarla. Diamo una pinza un attimo di qua per afferrare il bordo. Ok, una no, clinch qualsiasi. Pesce un attimo questo. Okay, very good question from uh, Dr. Esher, Mohamed Al Sharif. Uh, Mohamed asked to us if uh, uh, ultrasound evaluation is enough or if we need an MRI. Uh, so le, the literature is very clear. Uh, depends from the confidence that you have with uh, ultrasound or with MRI, and uh, the accuracy in good hands of ultrasound is a little bit better than MRI but MRI means MRI in good hands not a normal MRI with the normal uh, radiologist because it's very difficult to uh, recognize and evaluate the deep endometriosis so you need a very special skill and experience uh, based on the very huge number in order to have uh, the good uh, accuracy of the imaging. But if you have a good uh, sonographer, uh, ultrasonography, in my opinion, is better because it's a more dynamic uh, examination, more cheap. And so, in my opinion, uh, and in our center, we never use MRI in order to do the evaluation. And we publish it all uh, big data of our center uh, on the parametrium evaluation, on the rectal e evaluation. Uh, big numbers means uh, close to 1,000 cases of uh, uh, deep endo, and uh, the accuracy is uh, incredible. It's uh, on the compartment, on posterior compartment, anterior compartment, the lateral compartment. Uh, we have a percentage uh, close to 100%, we have 96, 97, and 98%. So uh, it's very, very precise. Of course, it depends from uh, uh, the confidence that you have with the, the imaging technique. If you have a good radiologist with MRI, of course, and a bad ultrasonographer, it's better to do MRI. And so, here you see the big nodule, huge no nodule here. The cranial part where you, we want to resect is close to the nodule. In our opinion, with this technique, uh, we reduce the size of the resected part of the rectum. So we are more conservative. This is the cranial part of the rectum open it perfect and we can go here <laughs> okay so we see very well this part we cut here this is the direction.
Prendo un po' più vicino qua. Now we can remove this part of the rectum through the rectum. So we go with the a simple forceps through the rectum un po' di luan poi mi fai cambiare il guanto destro we open a little bit the sfintere the anus and then we go with the anelli with the simple forceps laparotomic one through the rectum I go inside okay I cut the nodule and I go outside very 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 gentle with the the nodule in through the rectum and we remove this part. Then we go inside with the, the circular stapler uh, anvil. We decide to use a 29 and so we go inside with the anvil and the spike. Okay, uh, El Sharif asked to me to ask uh, if the sonographer have a specific preparation uh, that uh, he recommends uh, uh, before the scanning. Uh, she recommends uh, the use of uh, uh, small enema uh, just in the same morning of the examination and no more. This is enough to end the day evaluation it's only by ultra uh, by transvaginal ultrasound uh, it's uh, no good the transrectal evaluation because with transrectal probe you push the nodule inside the muscularis of the rectum and you can underestimate the inner of infiltration in the muscularis of the rectum so the the scan is through the vagina and sometimes it's transabdominal to uh, evaluate the right colon, the iliosecal valve, the appendix, uh, and the ascendant colon, and the ilio, and the kidney, of course. So, now, uh, we... Mettiamoci prima dopo questo. Allora, dammi due pinze solide, la clinch. Una clinch qua, una clinch là, e un'altra pinza al centro. So, now, the technique is to put this inside the hole here and to go outside laterally here so we need very precise movement and coordination between me and uh, Mariana so here is the area where I want to go out with the, the tip of the spike. Dammi la monopolare senza toccarmi questa mano. Perfetto, monopolare, piano, piano, piano. Uncino monopolare al centro. Ok. And so this is the area I go with the monopolar cut here to open, pushing at the same time. Aspetta, non mi fa più troppo. Like this, aspetta, no, 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 no. Ok, so, again. 
Are you able to understand the right? Yes, perfect. Perfetto. Dammi un'altra pinza adesso. Fa vedere la base di là, così perché lo devo prendere. Dammi vedere la base qua. Oh, aspetta, Mariana, scusa. Ok, è andata. Aspetta. Ok, now it's good. And the spike is outside. Ok. Then, dopo, dopo, dopo lo facciamo. Ok. Ok, now I have to push inside all the anvil inside the rectum. Prendi un attimo l'anvil qua. Così. Inquadrami di qua, fallo ruotare un po', perfetto. Ok, and so the technique is to try to put inside order. Pre solleva qua. Like this, I put inside the hole. Ah, metti il verso di te, non ti preoccupare, lo faccio il verso, lo faccio io, perché se no facciamo due, non... Ok. Prendi un attimo questo, perfetto. Deve essere sempre questa pinza che non va. Ma va bene così. Ok. And this is not so easy, but it's ok. Sollevo qua. Ok, adesso fai questo movimento così, sollevalo, sollevalo, così, così. Vuoi provare? Sì. Prova. Ok, we remove the, the spike and we can now use the right uh, Ok, this is the hole that we have to close now and it's easy to close with uh, el Ok a linear stapler I close this angle first and this two. Okay, very well. Okay, this is the position. Okay, now we change the trocar and we go with uh, an Eticon. Uh, Uh, disposable uh, 12 millimeter trocar on the right side armato vai like this scusa sì 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 certo ok and then we are ready to close the hole with the stapler so i want to show you the technology that we are using, so Roberto continuo is preparing dammi un attimo l'acqua calda per pulire l'ottica, così faccio vedere bene ok, the Echelon Flex 60 we 
we are using the 60 sides we close like this and we are ready perfect okay so thanks Roberto for preparing the the stapler and then we go inside we go inside I go inside then I open and then we go to like this to close devo un attimo sotto se va bene si ok I think it's very good and so we can uh, Dimmi. Sì. I stay for at least 10 seconds and then I start to close and then to leave and then we open it. We remove la harmonic and with the harmonic technology we can cut this part and remove through the right if possible through the right trocker if not okay we can we can remove okay so now uh, aspirazione Okay, so sometimes we need to use uh, small bipolar action here, this part, almost ready here here oh, it's okay so I want to check the mobility of the of the okay the descendant colon and the sigma it's okay no tension and I put up I will have to control it I check the bleeding here in the angle And we go to use another stapler to close the other part of the rectum. Mm -hmm. Here is a little bit more difficult because the, we have to change the angle. What we tried with the 60 again if not we have to change in two or three forty-five dimmi posso ok dimmi dobbiamo prima prenderla mm. si sì, ha ragione si sì, prendiamo la prima ragione si 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 an endo clinch in one angle and another endo clinch in the other angle. Here. And we 
must try to to close like this ok fammi entrare con questo now it's important to to increase the angle of the of the stapler so I open I push on the uterus like this and then I try to go in this direction we will try okay no no bad absolutely no bad lascio un attimo puoi lasciare absolutely I think good I go to close and I need probably another one altra carica then I remove and we go with the Yes, last here and we are ready. Secondo me siamo a posto. Devo chiudere solo qua, abbiamo fatto l'ultima parte qua. It's very good. Then we are ready to do the rhinostomosis with the circular stapler. And so, I open, I push on the uterus and with this position, with this angle, I go to close here. Try, Bryce. Venice, Venice, Miss, Miss, Venice, così. Lascia. Aspetta? No, forse no. Si è aperto male. Aspetta. Prendilo un po' al centro. Devo aprirlo meglio perché... Eh, esatto, così. Ma non è che si era perché si è andato a finire. Si è andato a finire. Mosi. Ok. Vado. Sì, ok. Me la devo mettere di qua. E qua mi puoi dare l'harmonic. E qui siamo arrivati a fine corso, perfetto. Sì, bene. Questo esce, vai, vai, vai. Perfetto. Poi l'aspiratore, puliamo un po' e poi siamo pronti. We are ready now with the circular stapler for the last part of the surgery and then we have only to remove the retrocervical nodule. Okay, and to check the perfusion, the vascularization that we usually do by Andersen Green evaluation with the Rubina camera that we are using. We are using the 3D 4K Rubina camera and with the possibility to to see the division for in Einstein in green evaluation okay Oh, very, very good. I go down to to show you the the circular. No, no. Ah, no, dici tu dobbiamo fare adesso? Eh, no, era solo per eh, sì. Va bene, lo possiamo fare adesso, che okay, facciamo prima adesso. Ok. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, it's better to do now 
the retrocervical nodule because we have more vision posteriorly and then at the end the anastomosis so you see this is uh, this is very good usually for anatomy because we can check everything in the parametral area so we start to do this so-called parametrectomy on the left side I stay here under the uterine artery and we see this is the the part of the infiltration but here is totally soft it's uh, here it's uh, superficial lesions I stay very close to the uterus it means that there is no risk of resection of the of the narrow part of the dorsal parametria that Mariana she's pushing laterally and uh, I say superficial here here no no but I don't have to serve okay and then we go stay here you see Very, very good here. And we can work at the origin here of the other part of the nodule. here you see this is totally retracted here the posterior wall of the uterus and uh, I feel that I am increasing the all the movement of the uterus with this here you see Perfect. And this is posterior wall of the uterus. Nice. I have a uh, This is a complete retraction posteriorly. Another very, very important, probably the most important preoperative ultrasound evaluation is to identify the retrocervical nodule and separate from the real infiltration of the uh, rectum. This is very important in order to give to the surgeon the correct infiltration of the disease. If you consider all the sites from here in to the infiltration of the inner part of the rectum, you can uh, overestimate the sites of the nodule. So you see, this is the all the retrocervical area, and this is the remain part of the retrocervical nodule attached here.
And so now we can remove from the retrocervix, starting laterally. Sì, sì, lo so, sparo un po' che... And all the big plaque here. Lo fai pulire la tocca. We clean the bike lamp, we clean uh, all the area and we can finish to remove all the big plaque posteriorly with infiltration here. I feel very soft posterior wall of the of the uterus. Aspetta, c'è una cosa nel frattempo. Se mi fai pulire un attimo l'ottica ancora. So, thanks again to all the people connected to today from different parts of the world. As always, we are uh, several hundred people connected. And perfect, we go here to finish our eradication of posterior plaque of the disease is the big nodule the remain part of retrocervical nodule so now i can uh, clean here and understand if we have to do other job or not uh, of course here there is probably a small part but very small And I think that we did a very good job posteriorly and in the central area. This is the typical retraction of the fundus of the uterus. Sì, infatti forse non deve trattarlo. No, 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 infatti no, ma non deve. Sì, sì. Sì, sì. Ok, sì. Ok, so, I think that we go ahead with uh, anastomosis and then at the end with the laser on the ovary. Penso pure io.
Se prendi proprio dove sto io. Qua. And we are you're ready. So now I want to show you fellow with the Google Monte. I'll show you the PC. Okay. The echelon circular. Fellow with the bed. Ruota un poco, fai vedere, farò uscire. We go inside and then we connect with the, the anvil, fallo rientrare. Ok. Again. Dammi la rectal probe, la sonda rettale se ce l'hai, manipolatore rettale. We can check now the distance from the anal verge of our resection. Sì, this is the rectal probe that we use to, to check the distance. Vai dentro. Ok, vai. Vai nel... Un attimo a vedere. Eh. We are at uh, a little bit more than 8. It's around 8 and a half, 9 centimeters from the anal verge. Consider that the ultrasound was at 7 cm from the anal verge because she considered a ultrasound also the superficial infiltration of the lower part. Bravo. Now ready to connect the the cranial part of the rectum. In a sabera. No, I don't know. Molto bene. Ok, we go a little bit, yes. Ok. Sì, vai. Ok, fisso, se ti tiri un po' dietro posteriormente, dal lato penso più dal lato destro, ok? Stiralo bene, ok. Ah. Ok, I stay for at least 10 seconds, reduce the, the edema of the tissue and then ready to follow the not to I arrive in the in the green part here. I follow the here in the green in the middle usually, okay? Bye. Uh -huh. And then I close with the 
circular echelon and then I move. Then Roberto will check the the two rings. Huh? Ah, sì, no, non è te, no, va bene. Ok. You are ready with the, the air bubble test, then with the blue dimethylene test. Then I will show you uh, another question uh, uh, from Dr. Sharif, if we recommend hormonal therapy prior the procedure, we usually put the patients under dinogest, under uh, progestinic medical treatment, but in this case she has a, a very uh, huge side effect, so she refused the hormonal therapy, so she is not under medical treatment, and this is one of the indications for the surgery of today. So about another question from, uh, I don't know the name, uh, but they asked me uh, how many volts is the monopolar uh, scissor. So I want to show you the, the precise setting of the machine. This is the Herbe machine, so-called Bio3. And uh, this is the setting of the monopolar. So, premi un attimo, I cut il giallo. 4.5 for I cut and uh, 5.5 is the setting for the precise monopolar coagulation mode connecting to the scissors. And. Fatto già, ok. We did a bubble test with the air, now we start with the test of uh, blue of methylene test, pushing uh, high pressure of uh, blue of methylene inside the rectum, closing the upper part of the rectum and checking the leakage with the blue, yes. Okay, high pressure of blue of methylene inside. Fortunately, no outside in the pelvis. The pelvis is free. And so, now we can uh, uh, ask to uh, Valeria, the nurse, to inject the endocellin green uh, intravenous. And so we can check the vascularization at the level of the anastomosis. And so, thank you to Ida Oppido, the other anesthesiologist of today. then remain to treat the right ovary with the laser and uh, to show you the specimen that the rectum and the sites of the nodule. Si. Injection intravenous of endocellin green pushing on the scope we, are, we change it in the endocellin green vision we wait very very few seconds and in few seconds you will see here the understanding green arriving from the aorta to the right commonly a artery and then in the in the pelvis so on the ureter you see all the vascularization on the right side and preserving the mesoureter and the vessel of the adventitia the same on the left uh, you see the uterine artery very well at the origin. You can check absolutely better with uh, the other mode of vision, not overlay but monochromatic, and you see very well all the vessel over there. So we see very well the vascularization at the level of the reanastomosis. We can, we can work with this vision 
no bed and you see the resection line with no vascularization, all the clips. And very, very good is the vascularization in the angle area, in the lateral part, posteriorly. So from the medical legal point of view, it's very important to document and to show the good vascularization in, in this area here. Very nice. We go outside and from monochromatic we come back to overlay, go out and we come back in the normal vision. Now we are ready with the biolitech uh, diode laser that we started to use two years ago and we treat the small endometrioma or the medium sized endometrioma with the laser because you know that the the risk of damage is lower and so we are ready with the fiber the fiber is a five millimeter fiber that we usually introduce in the central trocar and then we go outside with the fiber. So, dietro c'è sempre il pirulicchio che va. Ok, brava Valeria, perfetto. Sì, sì. We remove the standby and we are ready with the laser and uh, perfect treatment of endometrioma, superficial part and the deeper here, yeah, you see? Dammi un attimo una forbicina così lo apriamo meglio. We open a little bit the, the small endometrioma with the scissor and then we start to use the uh, laser treatment, the vaporization of the, of the endometrioma. Vedi un attimo, se sono entrato in quello giusto. Okay, so this is the very small endometrioma. Robby. And now we are ready to go again inside with the, the laser and we can treat inside the small endometrioma with the coagulation of the small capsula. Sì, sì, lo dobbiamo fare. Sì, si prepara tutto, certamente. Ok, we can use the same laser treatment for the superficial lesions or for the ear at the level of the uterus. and in the retrocervical area here and here We go anteriorly, but with I think that anteriorly is it's good, no problem. We have to remove now the T-lift. 
then I want to show you the specimen, the resected tract of the rectum. Removing the tea lift first. Una pinza così l'aiuto. Mette aiuto un secondo. Ok. Ok. We remove the right tea lift and then we are ready to finish with the vision of the of the specimen of the rectum. Ok, se ti prendi direttamente questa è la forbicina al centro, ok. Ok. Acqua. Very good, we check the the tubes and decide if you remove or not. No. Blue di metilene? Sì, 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 ma soprattutto l'altro intervento dei fasci. No, no, sì, no. Ma facciamo l'altro, l'altro intervento. E qua scende la bipolare. Ah, ok, fare le due laboro a seguire e poi lasciamo l'altra alla fine. Ma la vaporizzazione? Ma sì, sì. Non sono sicuro. Dopo sì. Ok, the, the bleeding on the over is ok. Here is the entry of the T-lift. Ok. And here. Ok, the characteristics uh, so Juan Carlos Canton Romero uh, asked me the characteristics of the laser. I will show you the presetting of the laser. The presetting is the power of the laser is 20 watt. Uh, here. This is the time and this is the energy treatment that we use for the vaporization of the small ovarian cyst. And this is the setting of the harmonic. You see? And finally, we are ready to, to check the tubes, right? Okay, good. Good situation on the right side, on the left. Uh, she is not young, but she don't wants to remove, e if not necessary, the tubes. So in this case, I think that we can preserve the, the tubes. Uh, okay, 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 okay. And I show you the, the specimen. Dove vuoi? Sì. Eh, secondo me lo possiamo inquadrare anche con questo. Eh, se mi vieni tu, lo porti qua. Sì. We want to show you the specimen. Ok. Okay, so I feel the nodule here, big nodule. This is my finger inside, and I feel the stenosis here 
So, if I go like this to open, you know that the characteristics of this uh, nodule, uh, bowel nodule, is that they, uh, the, the infiltration of the mucosa is very rare. So, I cut in the middle part of the, of the nodule, arriving at the mucosa. Okay, and I am exactly in the middle. So, you see that the mucosa, the integrity of mucosa is perfect. There is only retraction here of the mucosa in the both part. And this is the big nodule. You see the big nodule is the, the white part that you see the avascular fibrotic part that infiltrates only the muscularis. The, the nodule grow inside the muscularis and increase the size and the dip of the muscularis of the rectum. Usually the muscularis uh, is uh, around two millimeter and you see very well by ultrasound. So you see very well by ultrasound the normal inner, the normal aspect of the muscularis and then you see the nodule and you see and you can evaluate the sites of the nodule you see this is uh, very uh, very nice to explain because if you check if you check the sites of the nodule following the idea idea criteria international criteria, you go from here to here. I want to show you better. From here to here, follow it better. Okay, from here to here, it's very small. <laughs> it's one centimeter. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's uh, not the correct size because there is a, a totally uh, curve here of the of the bubble so by ultrasound the evaluation starts from here following the curve going there so the size like this is more than 40 centimeters so now it's difficult to evaluate but if we want to do we have to cut here and transform the curve in the linear if it became linear <laughs> it's it's easy to evaluate now you see and now we can check Ah, in fact, this is enormous. Okay, and you see that the sites are rubbish at five centimeters. Okay, so this is important, you see, because in the lecture, the IDEA mm, group is an international group of uh, ultrasound or skinner in the treatment of and evaluation of endometriosis, uh, uh, say a different uh, kind of uh, evaluation of the sites, but we, we published our results uh, and uh, our technique to do ultrasound uh, and we believe that this is the right uh, uh, kind of uh, evaluation in order to avoid to underestimate the sites of the nodule. Uh, Dr. Sharif uh, asked me uh, if we have uh, uh, usual uh, specific uh, follow-up for uh, these patients. Of course, usually we see the patients uh, uh, every six months uh, with the clinical evaluation, with the uh, uh, ultrasound evaluation in order to evaluate uh, the uh, risk of recurrence. Uh, usually we put the patients under uh, Dynagest uh, medical treatment with progestinic medical treatment. In this case, uh, she has many side effects, so it's uh, uh, not possible to put the patients under medical treatment. So remain only the traditional follow-up with ultrasound and clinical evaluation. We don't need the markers, the CA125. We never ask for these uh, uh, ovarian markers uh, uh, because we know from literature and from the last uh, 
uh, actual guidelines that uh, it's uh, uh, we don't need it because there is no correlation between uh, the markers and uh, the uh, the kind of the disease. And we never ask uh, for a colonoscopy because uh, uh, you know that. Uh, uh, we show you that the nodule never arrives inside the mucosa, so you don't need the colonoscopy. So please never ask for colonoscopy and I never ask for double contrast enema because it's uh, very uh, bad for the patients. Uh, and you don't need it uh, because you don't need uh, to know nothing from the double contrast enema because the inner infiltration uh, you understand from ultrasound, the percentage of stenosis also so it's uh, unuseful the and the old examination that we used in the past uh, until 10 years ago but not not now okay so we are ready to finish the day and uh, thank you uh, all of you thanks for uh, uh, being with us uh, today uh, the next appointment uh, is uh, after the holiday in uh, September and so very good holiday to all of you and uh, uh, ciao from uh, our side for all my team uh, and see you in September bye bye